Hello all, welcome to this video on machine learning. Today I'll be talking about parametric methods which are MLE and MAP and Bayes formulation. Let's begin. A statistic is any value that is calculated from a given sample. In statistical inference, we make a decision using the information provided by a sample. Our first approach is parametric where we assume that the sample is drawn from some distribution that obeys a non-model, for example, Gaussian. The advantage of the parametric approach is that the model is defined up to a small number of parameters, for example, mean, variance, which are the sufficient statistics of the distribution. Once those parameters are estimated from the sample, the whole distribution is known. We estimate the parameters of the distribution from the given sample, plug in these estimates to the assumed model, and get an estimated distribution which we then use to make a decision. The first model that we'll discuss is maximum likelihood estimation. For this we'll begin with density estimation which is the general case of estimating p of x. Now density estimation is the problem of reconstructing the probability density function using a set of given data points. A probability density function describes the probability of a variable which is a continuous random variable falling within a range. In case of classification, the estimated densities will be the class densities given by P of X given CI and priors which are given by P of CI which will be used to calculate the posterior probability given by P of CI given X and based on this we will make our decision. Prior is the probability that an observation will fall into a group before you collect the data. Whereas posterior probability is a revised probability that takes into account new available information. Let us say we have an independent and identically distributed sample x which is set xt where t varies from 1 to n. We assume that xt are instances drawn from some known probability density family p of x given theta which is defined up to parameters theta which is given by this. We want to find theta that makes sampling xt from p of x given theta as likely as possible. Because xt are independent, the likelihood of parameter theta given sample x is the product of the likelihoods of the individual points which is given by L of theta given x which is equivalent to P of x given theta which is the product from t equal to 1 to n P of x t given theta. Now likelihood is how well a sample provides support for particular values of a parameter in a model whereas probability is the chance that a particular outcome occurs based on the values of parameter in a model. In maximum likelihood estimation, we are interested in finding theta that makes x the most likely to be drawn. We thus search for theta that maximizes the likelihood which is given by this. We can maximize the log of the likelihood without changing the value where it takes its maximum. Log converts the product into sum and leads to further computational simplification when certain densities are assumed, for example, containing exponents. The log likelihood is defined as capital L of theta given x, which is equivalent to log of L theta given x, which is the summation from t equal to 1 to n log of p of x t given theta. If we have a two class problem, the distribution we use is Bernoulli. When we have more than two classes, its generalization is multinomial. Gaussian or normal density is the one most frequently used for modeling class conditional input densities with numeric input. Now we'll see an example of calculating the maximum likelihood estimation. Suppose we have a discrete random variable x with the probability mass function where 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 1 
which is a parameter. We are given 10 independent observations and the values of x and their probabilities. Now we are asked to find the maximum likelihood estimate of theta. First of all, we will find out its likelihood which is given by the product of probabilities of all these individual experiments. So it should be p of x equal to 3 multiplied by p of x equal to 0 etc. p of x equal to 1. On substituting the values, we get this expression and we see that this is not easy to maximize. So, we will take the log of this likelihood function, capital L of theta and substitute. Then, we will group all the constants that are not dependent on theta into C and consider only those containing theta. And we assume that the derivative of this with respect to theta is 0. Then we apply the rules of log. Log m raised to k is k log m. Log m into n is log m plus log n. And derivative of log x is 1 by x natural log of 10. On substituting the values, that is this, and taking its derivative, we get the maximum likelihood estimate theta cap as 0.5. Now we will see Bayes formulation. In machine learning, we are often interested in determining the best hypothesis for some space H given the observed training data D. One way to specify what we mean by the best hypothesis is to say that we demand the most probable hypothesis given the data D plus any initial knowledge about the prior probabilities of the various hypotheses in H. Bayes' theorem provides a direct method for calculating such probabilities. More precisely, Bayes' theorem provides a way to calculate the probability of a hypothesis based on its prior probability, the probabilities of observing various data given the hypothesis and the observed data itself. We shall write P of H to denote the initial probability that a hypothesis H holds before we have observed the training data. P of H is often called the prior probability of H and may reflect any background knowledge we have about the chance that H is the correct hypothesis. Similarly, we will write P of D to denote the prior probability that training data D will be observed. Then we write P of D given H to denote the probability of observing data D given some hypothesis H holds. In machine learning problems, we are interested in the probability P of H given D that H holds given the observed training data D. This is called the posterior probability of H because it reflects our confidence that H holds after we have seen the training data D. In contrast, to the prior probability p of h which is independent of d. Bayes theorem is the cornerstone of Bayesian learning methods because it provides a way to calculate the posterior probability p of h given d from the prior probability p of h together with p of d and p of d given h. So Bayes theorem is written as p of h given d equal to p of d given h into p of h divided by P of D. Now we will look into maximum a posteriori estimation. This is often abbreviated to MAP estimation. It estimates one or more probability parameters theta based on the principle that we should choose the value of theta that is most probable given the observed data D and our prior assumptions which is summarized by P of theta. Now theta cap map is given by argmax of P of theta given D for theta which means it will take the value of argument theta that can maximize P of theta given D. 
Now we can rewrite the MAP principle using the base rule, which is given by theta cap map arg max of p of theta given d for argument theta, where p of theta given d will be replaced by p of d given theta into p of theta by p of d. Now p of d doesn't depend on theta. So we can simplify this expression by writing it as theta cap map as arg max of p of d given theta into p of theta for theta. Now comparing this with the equation for maximum likelihood estimation, we will see that maximum likelihood estimation was choosing a theta to maximize p of d given theta, whereas MAP principle maximizes p of d given theta into p of theta. The only difference is the extra p of theta. Now we will illustrate the Bayes rule with an example. We are considering a medical diagnosis problem in which there are two alternative hypotheses. The first one is that the patient has a particular form of cancer and the second is that the patient doesn't. The available data is from a particular laboratory test with two possible outcomes that is positive and negative. We have prior knowledge that over the entire population of people, only 0 0.008 have this disease. Furthermore, the lab test is only an imperfect indicator of the disease. The test returns a correct positive result in only 98% of the cases in which the disease is actually present and a correct negative result in only 97% of the cases in which the disease is not present. In other cases, the test returns the opposite result. This can be summarized by the following probabilities. Probability of a person having cancer is 0 0.008. So the probability of a person not having a cancer will be 1 minus this value which is 0 0.992. Similarly, probability of a person which is positive given the person has cancer is 0 0.98. So the case where the person is positive, given that the person doesn't have cancer, will be 0 0.03. Probability of a person who is negative, given the person has cancer, is 0 0.02. Whereas the probability of a person who is negative, given the person doesn't have cancer, is 0 0.97. Suppose we now observe a new patient for whom the lab test returns a positive result. Should we diagnose the patient as having cancer or not? For this, we will use the maximum a posteriori hypothesis which we just discussed before. So using that, we will calculate the probability as probability of the person being positive given the person has cancer multiplied by the probability of the person having cancer. We will get this value. We also take the value where the probability is person is positive given the person doesn't have cancer multiplied by the probability that the person doesn't have cancer which gives this value. So from this values we can conclude the map estimated value as the person not having cancer. The exact posterior probabilities can also be determined by normalizing the above quantities so that they sum up to 1. So the posterior probability is given by the probability that the person has cancer given the person is positive. Substituting the values, we get it as 0.21. Now we'll take an example and try to work it out using both the methods of maximum likelihood estimation and maximum a posteriori hypothesis. We have a coin which is represented by a random variable x. On flipping the coin, it may turn up heads which is indicated by x equal to 1 or tails which is given by x equal to 0. 
So the learning task here is to estimate the probability that it will turn up heads. That is, to estimate p of x equal to 1. For this, we will take theta to refer to the true probability of heads, where p of x equal to 1 is theta, and theta cap to refer to our learned estimate of this true theta. We can gather training data by flipping the coin n times and observe that it turns up heads alpha 1 times and tails alpha 0 times. So n will be equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 0. First, we will calculate the probability estimate using the maximum likelihood function. Given the observed training data, producing alpha 1 total heads and alpha 0 total tails. We will write the output estimate as theta cap which is given by alpha 1 by alpha 1 plus alpha 0. For example, if we flip the coins 50 times observing 24 heads and 26 tails, then we will estimate the probability p of x equal to 1 as theta cap given by 0.48. Now this approach is quite reasonable and very intuitive. It is a good approach when we have plenty of training data. However, notice that if the training data is very scarce, it can produce unreliable estimates. For example, if we observe only 3 flips of the coin, we might observe alpha 1 will be 1, alpha 0 will be 2, producing the estimate theta cap as 0.33. Now we will take the probability estimate using MAP. Here given the observed training data producing alpha 1 observed heads and alpha 0 observed tails plus the prior information expressed by introducing gamma 1 imaginary heads and gamma 0 imaginary tails. Now the output estimate will be theta cap which is given by alpha 1 plus gamma 1 divided by alpha 1 plus gamma 1 plus alpha 0 plus gamma 0. Here we can note that like in the first case, this case also produce an estimate based on the proportion of coin flips that result in heads. The only difference is that this case allows including optimal imaginary flips that represent our prior assumption about theta in addition to the actual observed data. Now the second technique has several attractive properties. It is easy to incorporate our prior assumptions about the value of theta by adjusting the ratio of gamma 1 to gamma 0. For example, if we have reason to assume that theta equal to 0.7, we can add in gamma 1 as 7 imaginary flips with x equal to 1 and gamma 0 as 3 with imaginary flips with x equal to 0. It is easy to express our degree of certainty about our prior knowledge by adjusting the total volume of imaginary coin flips. For example, if we are highly certain of our prior belief that theta equal to 0.7, then we might use priors of gamma 1 equal to 700 and gamma 0 equal to 300 instead of gamma 1 equal to 7 and gamma 0 equal to 3. Now if we set gamma 1 equal to gamma 0 equal to 0, then the second case produce exactly the same estimate as the first case. So the first case is just a special case of the second case. Asymptotically, as the volume of actual observed data grows towards infinity, the influence of our imaginary data goes to zero. In other words, the second technique behaves so that priors have a strongest influence when observations are scarce and their influence gradually reduces as observations become more plentiful. In fact, both of these techniques, that is MLE and MAP, they exemplify the two most widely used approaches to machine learning of probabilistic models from training data. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.